So yeah, I was saying about the connector descriptor, which is part of the REST Connect approach. Then um, for different connectors, we'll be having test connection method defined, right? So we'll little bit uh, learn about test connection. Uh, I mean, how we can in, uh, implement the test connection for our uh, custom connector and what is the, I mean, advantage when we are doing it, we'll be discussing it. And we'll be also uh, discussing a requirement with examples, okay? So that being said, let's, uh, go to the mule connectors so basically mule connector is a as you know is a reusable component um, i mean which kind of interacts with the mule runtime and any point studio which will transfer something which kind uh, which some kind of operation is happening inside and that is being abstracted and given us to in a in a very simple ui form right so um it might be connecting to an external resource or, or it, it is providing an a service that we require, or it might be connecting to any database, any protocol, or even an API, which can be used as a resource. So uh, according to the mules of connector, we have two connectors, endpoint based connectors, as well as operation based connectors. So endpoint based connectors, uh, as you can see, it will be having either an inbound or outbound endpoints in a flow, uh, like HTTP uh, listener, it's having an inbound uh, endpoint, right? So it, it, it serves as a message as, as a source for a flow. And let's say a connector like JMS or any point MQ, which will be communicating between different flows or different applications. So these are endpoint based connectors. And what about operation based connectors? I mean, if the, op, uh, if the connector consists of different operations that we want to achieve, like uh, using that connector, we'll be achieving some kind of uh, exchange between systems or applying custom logics, applying complex logics and returning the required data. Uh, those kind of are operation based connectors. So as you can see, uh, different example of the operation based connectors are given here. Um, yeah. So here is the back end of what is happening uh, for the connector actually. So as I said, a connector is a reusable component. Okay. And a reusable component is having multiple configurations, connection providers and parameters, right? Um, so as you can see, this is the, an example of a connector, which is a MongoDB. I have shown here in the screenshot, uh, which is having multiple operations, right? So this MongoDB is the component here and it is having multiple operations like user collection exists and so and so. So, and inside the connector it will be routing the request to different endpoints and different resources as well as there will be multiple complex functions defined inside it in order to uh, i mean achieve something for the end user right so basically this is uh, what happening inside a connector so uh, the complexities that is involved is abstracted i mean for, from the ui perspective a user won't be seeing these things right we are just getting a simple uh, and an easy to configure a ui format where we, I mean, configure the connection providers, parameters, configuration, et cetera. So let's say in the MongoDB, if I am going with a uh, drop collection operation, okay, drop collection operation, it, it, it requires a connection configuration and what kind of connection provider uh, we need to define it. And also as well as the parameters that we need to pass it to the MongoDB. Let's say if, if I am using the drop collection, then we want to pass uh, what is the name of the collection that we want to and in the connection configuration, we need to pass um, the connection string or the database name or username or password. So that that is the parameter associated with connection provider. So let's see why we need a custom connector. Okay. Um, in this session, by meaning of the custom connector, uh, I want you to get a, get a picture of a wrapped REST API calls. Okay. A wrapped group of REST API calls. So uh, I mean, if we can always achieve REST API calls through uh, HTTP requester, right? So in that scenario, why do we need custom connectors? So I would say, uh, if you want to achieve, I mean, if you want to implement multiple security schemes in our uh, REST API, okay, uh, or the application uh, that which is already implemented somewhere, if you want to use multiple security scheme, so uh, it will become more complex to implement this as a uh, HTTP requester, or if you, if we want to implement in a simple way, right. Then if, uh, let's say there is an API, uh, which, 
which implements pagination okay so as you know pagination uh, is like if a response is having a huge number of data in a record we don't want the records to be uh, i mean we don't want the records to be received in a single uh, response because it will uh, either it will it might take a huge time so in that scenario uh, in order to uh, i mean make it more modular we will be going with the pagination approach right so in the case of pagination uh, we will be getting different pages on a different response and we need to pass uh, a page number uh, or an offset parameter whatever it is based on the pagination approach implemented for the api so if we want to implement this in an http requester uh, i mean as if, if you want to implement it as we prefer on the http requester then uh, we might need to configure many things uh, inside the header inside the parameters part so uh, let's say if an application okay we might be using that application or that group of rest api calls in some other uh, application also okay and we don't want to be bothering about what is the implementation of the this particular application so every time when we want to reuse this uh, uh, application we again want to implement this uh, complex logics like pagination and everything so in that scenario also we can go with the custom connector approach so next thing is the different base uris for apis so let's say um, our api okay which developed um our application which is having multiple operations inside it so if you are going with a um http requester to call these apis so let's say there is a group of apis for uh, for some of the endpoints okay for some of the endpoints let's say for the get operations we'll be using one base uri okay and for maybe for a file uploading or any other data exchange something they will be using a different base uri okay so in this scenario uh, if we if we are able to configure it I mean, if we want to configure it then it will be a little bit difficult and if we want to reuse the same module in different different places that won't be a suggestible approach right so if we are able to get it like a simple ui where we can configure things very simply then that would be more preferred and the next most important thing is the metadata so whenever Uh, we are using a, a rest api okay i am i'm saying about the rest apis here um so if you want to create something if you want to um i mean add something to the database so let's say there is an api let's suppose there is an api to create user okay and the user if you want to create the user if you want to use that api we should be knowing what kind of data we should be passing into the payload right uh, and if if there is no metadata before that i mean if there is no metadata uh, i mean given there then we need to always go through the documentation to see what is the metadata that we need to pass so if we are going with the custom connector we can define our own metadata for all the operations that way we can uh, do the integration with the mules of any point studio and in the input output metadata propagation we can simply i mean clearly see the uh, what kind of data this uh, particular operation expects as well as what kind of data this particular operation i mean uh, outbounds okay and we can uh, the metadata propagation is, since the metadata propagation is happening we can do whatever things with the data that comes out of it right and also as i said some of these uh, approaches are possible using http requester okay but uh, the complexity that may occur when we are going with the pagination or multiple security scheme and base uris that complexity we don't want to uh, i mean we don't want to be uh, using i mean seeing the complexity right we just we can hide the complexity and we can use the connector as a simple ui uh, thing and at last uh, this is a very important thing like validating the connection at design time so let's say i have uh, multiple apis to implement uh, in my application okay and at the design time do we have a provision to test the uh, connection no right i mean if you are having a connector and there is some operations associated with it and if we want to check uh, the credentials that we input as well as the um, base uri we input is validating against the server correctly i mean it's an advantage additional advantage right so that kind of for that these kind of purposes 
we can go with the custom connector approach okay now um, there are multiple ways to create the custom connector um there is mule sdk approach xml sdk as well as the rust connect which we are going to discuss today so mule sdk if some of you may already know that it, it is related to a maven archetype command which will ask for us to uh, the name of the connector and the version of the connector and the group id like that then after that it is directly uh, navigating us to the java project right and we need to make customization to the java project that is generated after it so a person who is not well versed with java or not from a clear java background will not be able to work on it and create a connector simply uh, so that's one limitation not limitation i would say that's a complexity of going with the mule sdk so what about xml sdk xml sdk have many limitations to develop like uh, it cannot develop any source based uh, connectors that is we have discussed endpoint based connectors right we can develop any uh, connectors having sources and also there is no recursive calls possible when we are going with xml sdk and all the parameters should um, what should follow the xml valid string approach so those kind of uh, limitations are there for mule sdk as well as xml sdk so what what is the advantage of using rust connect here to generate the custom connect so it will it, it is actually like little or no coding um, to generate a connector um because if somebody i mean is not well versed with java and want to develop a connector based on the rust api calls he can do he can go with this rust connect approach okay so moving on we'll dis, uh, discuss the advantage of rust connect um uh, fahad yeah sorry to interrupt you there is a question from samvinathan so valid connection at a design time means in the design center uh, we can test connection Generally. with http request also yeah, validate connection at design time means in the design center no 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 we can test connection with this also correct so uh one second validate connection at the same time what if uh, okay okay i got the question i will answer one second okay so let the validating connection at design time so the design time in the sense i meant not the raml design uh, swaminathan i meant when we are designing the application inside mules of any point studio okay and at that time let's say okay i am having uh basic authentication as my security scheme as well as auth as my security scheme okay two security scheme i have implemented if i want to test connection okay for both of them uh let's say um i am going with the client credentials approach for the auth one okay if i want to test for both of them then uh, wouldn't it be much simpler if we are going with a simple ui rather than just going with the http requester so for that only um, i said validating connection at the same time okay i hope i answered your question yeah thanks thanks for that question okay so let's discuss the advantages of um, going with the rust connect approach um, as the name says rust it is a support for raml as well as os okay um, and it also supports paginated operations so as i said if i want to implement pagination in my connector i need to be just providing what is the pagination strategy applied here and what kind of parameter involved in the pagination of this api so there is a um, okay i'll explain how we can implement pagination in the custom connector moving on and also we have the support for all the security scheme uh, like basic authentication pass through as well as the other auth protocol and okay the next one is the metadata propagation so whenever we want to uh, say that this particular operation is expecting this kind of value okay we can give the input metadata simply as well as the output metadata this particular operation will be sending out this kind of uh, response and the next thing is sub multiple base urls multiple base urls refers to the one that i spoke previously um 
whenever we have uh, let's say an organization is having multiple endpoints okay and some of the endpoints is having one base url like uh, for all the um, plain things uh, i mean uh, getting the data getting the user data everything they'll be having um, a what a, a simple base url and for uploading the files as well as for other complex thing they will be having a different base url so in this case we need to handle we need to handle the different endpoints using different base urls right so for this scenario we have a support multiple base urls in raml so uh, once i the uh, connector using i mean in between developing the connector using rest connect we can add even i mean even in the middle we can add the security scheme we can customize those operations as well as we can add the uh, metadata okay and one other important advantage that we are getting here is um once we i mean define the once we design the apis related to which we uh, how the connector we want to be we can ignore specific api endpoints um let's say i have uh, in the initial part i have in, uh, i have included two or three endpoints to my operation okay so after uh, i mean in the middle of the development somebody is saying that we don't want that endpoint or we don't want that query parameter or we don't want that security scheme to be uh, implemented in the final connector we just want it in the development phase but let's not use it for the final connector then we can use that ignore command uh, we'll we'll see the demo of us uh, i mean in coming slides we can use the ignore command in order to specifically uh, in order to ignore the that particular api resources next important thing is the test connection as i told you uh, we can configure the test connection as per our requirement um, like sending a if, let's say for the test connection um, we have to validate the test connection if we get a 200 status code okay or else we have to validate uh the test connection along with the 200 as the status code and as the payload we'll be expecting something else then only we need to validate the test connection so in that scenario this rest connect approach simplifies those complex things so how to create a custom connector using rest connect uh this is the overview of it what is the first step that we need to do we need to create an api specification okay and for that we can use either raml or os both are supported in this approach so as you can see the second step is the important step here i would say uh, it is to generate the connector descriptor from the api specification uh, which we have designed okay and um, there is an important thing here like this api specification and connector descriptor is not exclusive like uh, this api specification is depended on this connector dot descriptor uh, connector descriptor dot yaml okay connector descriptor dot yaml is like a wrap around our api specification so i would say uh, for an example let's say uh, a car okay a car will be having an engine and all other things rest, rest of the things will be there right our api specification is like a engine of the car okay uh, we can do many customization to that particular engine to make it like a car uh, so that's the purpose of connector descriptor okay uh, but the real thing is even then even if we can make applications to the api specification okay we can't change the root things of the api specification like endpoints please uh, keep this in mind we can change the uh, different uh, query parameters the names of the description uh, and whatever security schemes we can change it but we can change the endpoints or resources that is defined inside api specification so this is a second step uh, in generating the uh, custom connector for the connector descriptor inside inside the connector descriptor we can do many uh, customization as it is an additional layer to the current api specification so using so after that using both api specification as well as the connector descriptor we can generate the uh, connector project which is a maven based project okay so java maven based project will be generating it from using both api specification as well as connector descriptor then 
we can uh, since it's a maven based we can use the maven commands to install the connector in our local repo or or else in the uh, our organization okay so let's uh, this is the high level view let's see the demo for the uh, custom connector creation so there is a requirement okay i'll explain the requirement there is an organization having an application called user app okay and the, they have given us the base uri and as well as the operations involved inside that connector okay which are get users get user by id create user delete user as per the endpoint says it will get all the users and a particular user or create user or delete a particular user and these four endpoints they are all the endpoints secured by x api key header so only whenever we pass um this x api key proper x api key header only we are able to access this endpoints okay so what is the requirement here they want user app to be wrapped as a custom connector to use it on multiple applications so this is the requirement so they may be expecting a pagination implementation in their app in future maybe so if say uh, this get users as for now it will only return a little bit uh, amount of users but in future they are expecting a huge load of data when returning get users okay so we might need to make it paginated right so again if i want to implement this in my anypoint studio what i need to do i need to implement the pagination logic so it will look our final application a little bit complex and they don't want to be emphasizing on this particular application because they have other business aspects to do they want to expand their business so every in their multiple applications they want to consume all these operations okay all these operations so it will be best if they get it by modular and operations uh, listed over the mule palette and we can choose it and we can configure it as per our need so uh, that is the requirement here and for this to be done they have also provided one test connection endpoint okay which we don't want explicitly to be implemented in the uh, as part of the connector we just want it as a test connection endpoint so moving on i'll show you where we will be using this and how we can achieve that test connection using this endpoint okay and also test connection endpoint which uh, shared by them is secured by x api key header so let's test the application on postman so this is the application they have uh, shared uh, apis basically it returns all the users uh, of this endpoint get all users endpoint returns all the users uh, inside it inside the app and if i want to create a user okay let me see if the user is um, reflecting or not let me create a test connection for a test user for with a 35h okay the user has been created and let me see that user has been reflected here or not so as you can see the test user for and with the age is reflected here and if i want to get a user by id they have also provided that i just simply ask this id so that i can get that particular user from the database and also i can you i can delete a user if i provide the respective id okay status uh, 200 okay we we get the response as the user has been deleted so if i try to get this user again then it won't be there because the user has been deleted and as you can see these all these endpoints as i told you all these endpoints are secured by x api key header okay i have given the value as cb meetup for now uh, so if i pass something wrong i should be getting invalid api key for not one unauthorized okay so for this purpose only uh, they have given the test connection endpoint so if i pass a wrong um api key over here okay it will show invalid api key so let me pass the successful one 
the 500 test connection point it will say connected successfully so i am going to do is um inside my connector okay i want to build a logic where if i get a 200 okay status code um, when i am calling a particular function then i will return test connection successful in my connection configuration so i am planning to implement it so what is the next step here as i told you first we need to design the raml for this right so let's uh, not the raml uh, api specific. hello uh, balki i think some noise is coming from there. okay okay You are on. Ah, yeah. Okay. Now it's clear, right, Fahad? Yeah, my voice is clear, right? Yeah, yeah, you are. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so I was saying that. So we have tested all the endpoints shared by the X Y Z organization, right? Now the next step is to design an API specification for these endpoints. So I'll get uh, get the help of any point design center. and i will design my api specification using raml okay so for saving the time i have already designed the raml we'll quickly run through the raml in second okay so uh, in the raml i have given the base uri whatever base uri they have given me and this versioning is important as for the connector we need to maintain a we need to maintain the versioning and inside the security scheme i have defined the x api key security scheme we'll see that in a, in a little bit time and i have defined all the four endpoints required to implement as a connector okay create user delete user i'll uh, get user get user by id so here um we can discuss one of the endpoints and how it will reflect in the any point studio connector okay second so in if if i want the custom connector uh, there will be multiple operations involved in it and there will be operation name as well as the description when we hover the uh, hover around the operation name right we'll get a uh, description in the tooltip so how can we achieve this how can we customize this so go into this particular endpoint i mean we can under this operation okay get operation in the display name i can put whatever name we want for the operation name okay and whatever description i need to show in the tooltip i can put under description so this is very important and moving on in the query parameter okay if it either it is a query parameter or a uri parameter be showing as a parameter inside our connector okay uh, when the connector is developed the final user won't be knowing what parameter that we are passing in here okay so in the query parameter uh, this particular endpoint is expecting id as a query parameter to get a user by id so in the display name i'll be giving user id and that will be reflecting on here okay i have given display name and what is the description that description will be given in the tooltip of uh, that particular query parameter so when a final user is using this connector he will be getting an idea what value should be passing and what kind of value it expects okay and when we have put this required as true this error will pop up like uh, it won't it will show error uh, saying that this particular parameter is required and uh, let's see the metadata part um, we know when we are using the connector as i told you a metadata propagation is an advantage for us but how can we achieve it this is the way uh, i mean here in the connector we can see what kind of value uh, this connector is uh, the response of the connector is right which is array of an object and there is name id age as well as email so if somebody wants to consume this to another operation i mean exchange this information to another connector or another operation this is how we can do it so for that we need to define a type over here okay so okay 
this can either be a ramel data type or it can be a json schema okay uh, both both of them are uh, possible here okay so that being said um, okay let's go to the security scheme and i'll show you what kind of security scheme that i have implemented it is a xapi key as i told you our api expects an xapi key header if you have not passed the proper xapi key then definitely it will return 401 unauthorized so for that uh, it's a simple pass through uh, uh, security scheme where i need to pass what should i pass in the header and what is the type of value and what is the response returns so how does this reflect in any point studio so whenever uh, i am giving a description under here okay xapi key description under here sorry and uh, it will be shown as the tooltip description in the uh, connector configuration for the uh, custom connector okay so see whether this endpoints which i designed using this application is working in uh, this design console okay right uh i need to go with the base url which i have given in the xapi key let me pass proper one okay i am getting let me try passing the wrong one okay i am getting invalid api key so if i have not defined any secure uh, i mean security scheme over here then i will be getting invalid api key so uh, we have made sure that um, we have developed a good api specification according to our requirements so similar to the this one i have um, described i have done the same for all other endpoints also okay now the next step is to generate um i mean to download this project as raml okay let me download this okay this has been download and i have created a cb meetup folder where i will put the raml and i will extract it here okay so as you can see the raml is showing here so what is the next step the our first step is completed we have uh, designed the api specification so next step uh, is to create the connector descriptor which is a very important thing in rust connect so connector descriptor the definition has been given here it describes the connector so whenever somebody else is looking at the connector descriptor they should be having an idea about how the connector will look like what are all the operations involved what kind of security scheme is uh, there and if there is a test connection implemented and if there is pagination and uh, all the input output metadata things everything will be mentioned inside the connector descriptor class so it's a very simple readable format so that is a main advantage here it's because the connector descriptor is a yaml file okay uh so we'll see the yaml file how it look like and for this to generate the uh, connector descriptor we need to get the help of uh, one rust connect cli dependency okay so uh, it's around 77 mb of data i will Uh, i have already downloaded it in my end i'll go fetch it and once you download the jar the jar with the dependency what you need to do you just need to put it in the same directory where we have extracted our raml okay let's rename this i don't want this one okay so i have downloaded the dependency and i have put extracted it to the raml uh, directory now i need to create the connector descriptor using this how will we achieve this i'll open the command prompt here okay git bash here and i need to run a command which will generate the connector descriptor 
So since this is a Java jar, I'll go to Java jar command as well as the S connection jar. Uh, the first thing is we need to create a descriptor, right? So we need to pass the command as create descriptor. Okay. And we need to specify the API specification we just generated. So for that, we need to give the option API spec. And uh, the directory where our RAML exists. So since the RAML is existing in the same directory, we can directly give user app um, dot RAML. Okay. Uh, and the next thing is, since we are generating a descriptor YAML out of this, okay, we want to uh, give an option where our output uh, descriptor dot YAML will be placed. So for that, uh, here command and put that directory. So this slash should be changed and slash. See if there is any error or something. Okay. Output there. So the command should be okay. Sorry, I missed the T. Okay, is it successful? And we can see a descriptor dot YAML over here, right? If I open that RAML, YAML, sorry, not RAML, this descriptor is a YAML file, okay? You can see there is a very little information about the connector that uh, the Maven coordinates where we want the connector to be installed and the connector name as well as the base URL that we have given, uh, right? So this connector descriptor command have multiple options, which we can use in order to get a more rich descriptor.yaml. So these are the options which we can pass to the create descriptor command so that we can achieve something we want. So the most suggested uh, or the most required option here is to pass the mode you can see there is a mode option here, right? So by default, it will be set to minimal. We need to set the mode to verbose. Okay. By setting the mode to verbose, it will override my descriptor.yaml with a new one with many new features. Let's open it. So see, when I use the option, uh, the mode as verbose, I'm getting all the endpoints associated with the uh that ramel right so here um we can customize whatever we want to the uh, final expected connector here so let's go one by one through the uh, connector descriptor as this is very important uh, yeah so it's let's start with the connector name connector name parameter whatever connector name there is a connector name property given over here right I hope my screen. Uh, okay. So um, um, there is a connector name um, option or, or uh, property where whichever thing, I mean, whatever we have given in the connector name, it will be reflecting as the connector name in any point studio. Okay. And the next thing is all the connectors as well as the properties configurations in the, uh, I mean, associated with uh, mule soft is XML based, right? Whatever we configure here, there will be an XML tag associated with it. So if you want to specify what kind of X X XML prefix that we want to use, we can go with this extension XML property and we can give whatever ex uh, extension this prefix, prefix we want to give it here. Pay attention, this is uh, extension XML. As you know, uh, uh, YAML is case sensitive, right? So you need to be, if, if you're passing the property correctly, then only it will work. And it should be the uh, value showing here should be a valid XML string. That is a constraint here, okay? 
so let me give extension xml to my connector and i want the extension to be user uh, yeah just user okay and okay and we have the i mean option to choose base java package like when the connector is gener uh, connector project is generated there will be a root java package okay uh, so we can set according to our needs how the structure of that java package to be so by default i think it's com dot mules of connector itself but same value Uh, again these are optional values not required uh, for the connector development next thing is a very important uh, base uri okay if i go to my base uri i can see whatever base uri i have given in the raml is reflected over here and there is a type property associated with it which is current which is currently showing parameter by default so what are the options that we can give inside parameter we have three options um, we can either give as parameter or fixed or we can give us multiple so what is the difference parameter let's say uh, my application okay my application is currently deciding uh, sorry residing in a um, dev environment okay so the i mean the the domain associated with it, uh, the base uri associated with it, it will be different right but in the case of user at uat or whatever the testing environment it will be different so whenever it is in the production environment it will be different right so uh, in that scenario we can give uh, parameter as uh, sorry base uri type as parameter because uh, at the time of development user can put a specific uh, base uri and the final user have the ability to uh, change the base uri according to his needs or according to the environment that uh, base uri demands the next one is fixed if i change my base uri parameter type to fixed then i can't change the base uri anywhere and it won't be showing here here also i mean whatever operations we need to work on it will only refer this particular base uri fixed and this is the third one which is multiple so i have previously told you one advantage of rest connect is giving multiple base uris this is that multiple what does this really mean is that uh, as i told you when a, a set of api is having Uh, multi uh, one of the endpoints is having some kind of get operations and one of the endpoints is having file upload for both we will be having a different uh, base uri right so in that case we can choose the base uri according to our operation so it won't appear here so whenever we have two or three operations let's say we have three operations and we have three different endpoint three different base uri types for that okay then we can uh drag and drop that operation and we can choose the base uri from that operation configuration properties not from the main configuration properties okay so that's it with the base uri uh, just put this in mind parameter fixed as well as multiple and the next one is the ignored um property ignored property as you can see by default it is set to false right what is the use of ignored property uh we can uh query parameter we can ignore certain uh, operations and we can ignore certain headers and whatever let's say uh, i have developed um, five or six endpoints in my raml okay api specification i have developed five or six endpoints and at the time of after generating the api specification while developing the connector so the requirement changed like we don't want one end endpoint to be uh, implemented or we don't want one query parameter query parameter to be passed at this moment we just want to ignore it so we don't want to go back to the raml and change there make changes there generate the connector descriptor we can avoid that but just by changing uh, i mean just by adding ignored as true to the appropriate uh, requirement okay so that's with the ignored uh, property yeah next thing is the uh, pagination uh, strategies that is supported by the rest connect okay uh, there are three uh, ashish uh, yes ashish yeah yeah so i mean this is little risky right so let's say your query parameter in your endpoint is let's say required okay 
okay okay and in connector let's say somehow you make it you know uh, ignore uh, equal to true right yeah so that will get ignored right and in your actual endpoint it's required right so i mean i could see it's a little risky right here yeah but what is the real implementation of the api uh, ashish i'm not sure i'm uh, mm-hmm. i'm sharing my suggestion what is the real implementation of mm-hmm. the api uh, they have changed the end, uh, query parameter from their end so we are able to hit oh, this that query scenario, parameter. okay that scenario you are talking about right so let's yeah, say yeah. in the implementation you are changing it right okay and you you don't yeah. want to change it in the uh, uh, Ra- your yeah, specification Ra- okay yeah, yeah i got that point yeah okay go ahead go ahead okay thank you so yeah the next thing that we have the advantage is the paginations uh, property currently rust connect and the connector descriptor supports three paginations okay three pagination strategies which is offset based paging marker based paging and page number based pagination so as you know uh, offset based paging will be having offset query marker based paging will be having marker query and the page number uh, will be having a query parameter representing what page number to get and the page size that uh, it is returning so here this is the way that how we can implement pagination to our api um, we have to specify what kind of pagination it is and the parameters required to achieve that pagination okay so i have given different parameters that we can pass in order to achieve this particular pagination let's say uh, i'm going with offset based offset type pagination then i need to pass the offset parameters uh, i need i need to pass whatever offset parameter the api has implemented as well as the initial offset uh, so similarly for marker based pagination as well as a page number based pagination we need to pass different parameters so the thing here is uh, one important mandatory thing here is whenever the api is paginated we need to provide a paging response expression you know why Where the a response might be having a complex structure like uh, one object will be having details related to pagination and another object will be having the data the actual da- data that we want to extract uh, if the api is does not having any pagination uh, we don't want to bother about this but if the api is having pagination there might be cases i mean uh, it's not like mandatory to put all the paging things in a pa- response i mean there might be cases where uh, in the paginated response we will be having a complex object having paging the de- details as one object and the extra uh, exact data as a separate object so in that case we need to mention where our content is i mean here uh, in this particular uh, response payload dot hits will return whatever the data we want to extract okay so these are all with the pagination how we can implement next big advantage is the multi part form data as we know ramel do have the support to implement the multi part form data but again from the user perspective i mean uh, to make the user interface of um, what our connector configuration uh, connector operation much more simpler we can use the uh, property of connector descriptor here itself so in this particular endpoint we can see it is expecting a part of uh, request id attributes attachment as we know multi part will be having multiple parts and it will be having different data types so in this particular property we can define what is the name of um, here uh, we can define the friendly name of uh, those uh, respective parts so that it will reflect uh, one second i'll show you it will reflect in the uh, connector configure uh, sorry operation configurations parameter that we want to pass okay so that's an advantage of using connector descriptor we can define as per we need uh, i think this thing is lacking in the um, ramel we can define the multi part form data in ramel but again we can add we can customize it we can uh, change it to as per our requirement so um, yeah that's the thing with uh, multi part form data the next thing is um, test connection as i told you this is an advantage of uh, using uh, created descript- i mean going with the rust connect approach this is the advantage test connection we can customize the test connection as per our requirements so here i am if you can see in the test connection property i can give any path that i want to be uh, validate my connection against that particular base uri that we have given 
so as i told you our xyz organization has provided us with a test connection endpoint right so we can give the test connection endpoint over here and we can define uh, however we want to validate so here it is expecting status code as 200 so whenever our test connection endpoint returns a status code as 200 we can show in the ui that test connection is successful okay and we can also add multiple response validation to it maybe not only returning 200 is enough for to uh, validate the connection maybe we want to extract some of the data from the payload and see that some of the uh, value expected is uh, there or not and the next thing uh, is we will be having multiple connection i mean security providers like basic uh, will be there auth will be there or custom security policy will be there and dif for different security policies will be having different test connection strategy right and speaking about the test connection in the case of auth 2.0 uh, when we are going with the authorization code flow test connection does not make any sense right uh, because we want to uh, deploy the uh, callback listener first then only uh, then we need to authenticate ourselves to that callback listener so in that case test connection does not make sense so according to our needs we can um, customize this uh, test connection okay so let's add this test connection endpoint in our connector to descriptor so for that we just need to put this snippet i am currently going with the basic one bare minimum test connection okay so what i am doing there is a slash test uh, test connection provided by my uh, by xyz organization and i am expecting a 200 status code there that's it okay and uh, okay let's go through uh, the yaml once again um, so here you can see the connector jav right so what we need to understand here is the connector which we are going to develop will be i mean we'll be generating a maven project from this okay so all mavenized project all maven things will be uh, having this maven coordinates associated with it right where we can mention even if if it is in our local system where we want to put the uh, connector and what should be the artifact id and what kind of versioning we want to manage so those kind of things we can also uh, i mean customize this in our uh, what i mean the project uh, ide also but i'm saying that whenever somebody is looking at the connector descriptor he will have an idea oh okay the connector is installed at this location particular location uh, so we can customize it yeah and the next thing i want to tell you is that um, previously i have told you like uh, in the raml whenever what display name that we have given it will be given as operation name whatever description that we have given it will be given in the tooltip Uh, for the description right so here if somebody wants to change it okay if i want to change in some moment that i don't want this uh, operation to be having this name i want to change it to something else and i don't want the tooltip description to be something else so i can change it here so we are having the liberty to do that in the connector descriptor itself and also that is uh, the same case for uh, what id uh, query parameter itself okay um so whatever friendly name that i gave here okay that friendly name will be reflected over here uh in the user id okay and whatever description i have given here it will be reflecting over here uh i i mean here okay the maximum number of instances given right yeah so that's it the query param Mm. Okay, so we have discussed everything. So if you're going through our data, brief idea about how our connector will look like. Now let's the next step is to generate the connector project from this descriptor dot yaml. Okay. So again, to generate the connector descriptor, uh, we want to use of the we want to use that rest connect cli we have just downloaded uh, here the only difference is that we are passing create connector instead of create descriptor okay uh, and also 
along with the api specification we passed in the previous command we will be passing the descriptor that we just created okay so an additional layer so here we need to understand something uh, so that's why i have given the structure like this a high level structure like this because whenever you generate a connector descriptor it doesn't mean that it is exclusive or it is not uh, i mean based on api specification for the final connector uh, generation i mean the connector project or the project generation we need both the api specification as well as the connector descriptor so uh, uh, yeah as i told you um, if we make we can make additional customization in the connector descriptor but we can't change the endpoints or uh, we can add add the endpoints okay i'll show you the error scenario also whenever we try to generate a wrong descriptor.yaml uh, sorry uh, wrong connector project so to generate the connector project let me go back to my directory where this is happening let me open the git bash again i need to ask the as connect cli and create here i am instead of create descriptor i'll be using create connector and in the uh, i need to pass the api specification as well uh, user app user app connector camel and one thing is api descriptor this this descriptor and i need to provide the output directory where i want the uh, the connector project okay so while passing this uh, commands we have uh, we can pass these options also okay for for time being let's keep it the default one um okay descriptor ml now i need to provide the location where i want the project to be right so copy this and me change it to slash okay so i have told you i have made some changes to the endpoint so let's see whether we will get any error or mm. okay no main param was defined okay okay one second was passed main but the parameter session was passed but no parameter was defined in your okay one second okay okay create connector okay so since because i have not given the hyphen output directory option over here it is throwing the error so let's purposefully throw this error uh, where i am making changes to the endpoints which i have done mm. let's see whether project will okay see uh, it is defined here location path so uh, we have the, made the changes to the endpoint right we have made we have added an extra slash over here so it is directly picking up there and it is saying any path declared in the connector descriptor must be present in the api specification okay so this is a major concern we can't add any endpoints or we can't change any already present endpoints in the connector descriptor and the thing here is it it's, it gives us proper errors where the error occurs uh, and we'll try to generate this Luckily, this time. 
one second copy specification present in the any path declared in the carter descriptor okay path plus method get Okay, which is the where is we are getting okay so currently it's successful we have generated the connector project in the same directory i'll show you if i open the projects folder you can see a maven mavenized project is generated okay now we can use any ides uh, to open this project and one thing to keep in mind until this part only we are getting the help from rust connect now it is being purely the java thing okay uh, okay i'll open this project using any uh, intellij one second okay i have opened it so this is the bare minimum structure which we generated from the rust connect uh, using the rust connect approach the maven is the java project structure okay here you can see uh, the default structure of a custom connector or or default structure of a connector um, where we have config connection provider extension metadata as well as operation okay where is the entry point entry point is inside extension folder where we will be having user uh, whatever name that we have given to the connector there okay and uh, we have given some xml prefix over there right so that has been reflected over here and the configurations associated with this connector will be defined inside user app configuration class which is inside config folder okay there is no need to uh, there is no need of confusion this well structured and for the con configuration to work we need to provide uh, there will be a connection provider class defined inside defined inside connection provider folder okay um yeah and there will be default error types defined we can customize the error types uh that being said let's generate a sample uh, the bare minimum connector without making any changes okay and see how it will look like in studio so for me i have already uh, generated a connector using 1.0.0 version so let me change the version to 1.0.1 so whenever we make some changes uh, to the connector project uh, whenever we want to generate the connector increase the version okay so this is like major minor patch version whenever it's uh, according to the requirement we need to change the version and install it so currently if you see uh whatever maven coordinates that we have defined in the connector descriptor it is showing in the pom.xml of the project that just generated and i am installing it in my local uh to this particular folder and the version is 1.0.1 uh, let's hope there will be no maven problem one sec uh okay I'll... while it's installing let's speak a little bit about the connection provider class as you can see i am inside the connection provider package connection provider class so um this is the class that is responsible for our connection provider uh, here you can see whatever base uri that we have given it is being passed over here right in the studio um okay there are two parameters right in the connector configuration that we have defined uh, one is the one is the x api key so as, as you can see both of them will reflect here as base uri and x api key and we have given a default value okay uh, inside the base uri and that will be reflecting here as this and we have the provision to edit this because we have kept it as a parameter okay and we can configure the tls everything oh, so i have ashish here yeah yes sir 
Uh, there was a question on like siphon api happen header key okay, okay. so the rushil soni was asking okay where does it verify that it's a valid va you know x hyphen api header value where where okay. is getting validated where is getting verified that whatever value you are passing it's a valid one mm -hmm. actually uh, this particular application okay uh, this particular application that is this Uh, i told you that uh, it has been de developed by me only i mean uh, what does it do is i'll just show you a glimpse of it okay just to quickly understand what it uh, happens one second mm. so now i have generated the documentation of the app that i developed what does it actually do it uh, so for getting the user we'll see okay somebody has asked how it is returning that x api key verifying it right so what i have done is i have a mongodb uh, integrated okay so whenever i am uh, adding a i mean i'm sending a request to slash get users uh, it will check whether i am passing attributes dot headers dot x api key is equal to hard coded value as cbe meetup okay so if i am not passing the header as uh, cbe meetup then i will be raising an error a custom error uh, and i will be setting the status as 401 along with it i will be passing the message as uh, unauthorized so this is for a flow that i have designed okay um so similarly we have four other flow with the same strategy where attributes dot headers dot x api key is expecting cbe meetup as the value if the if it is not cbe meetup then it will raise an error and this is not an optimized way i mean just for the sake of development only i have did like this so i think i hope answer your question uh, right ashish okay yeah part go ahead yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks yeah okay so our connector has been installed uh let's go through the operations that we just in, uh, i mean did as per the operations that we have defined it has generated the four operations classes where the endpoints is automatically there and the content type everything is already populated so uh if i need to go to the metadata okay one thing i need to mention over here metadata thing uh, how it is One second. Okay. So here you can see we are inside. Uh, whenever we are creating a user, there should be an input uh, data over there, right? So in the RAML itself, I have defined a RAML data type where uh, what kind of data it is expecting. So uh, how will the connector try and I mean read this from here? So as you can see, the RAML data type which I had defined inside my RAML is automatically converted to a JSON schema. Okay. Um. so from this schema only the metadata propagation is happening okay so that's the metadata part you can always experiment through this and the operations i have told you four operations we have defined and four classes has been generated and the connection provider yeah the basic one so we have now generated the basic connector now let's see how we can import this in the studio and do something okay on it so in the studio i have already uh, created a project as well as a flow for flows to test this connector so how can i uh, i mean include this connector into my uh, project into my mule app so as this is a maven uh, what okay uh, maven is so we can give the maven dependency snippet in order to um, include the connector into our new app okay so uh, whatever maven coordinates that i have given inside the connector that should i, I be, uh, that should be giving in the dependency snippet okay so if i go back to my connector project in the pom.xml and see the maven coordinates is group id artifact id and version so uh, just for the sake of time i will show you in my m2 repository com Uh, so i am inside com mule soft connectors user app inside the 1.0.0 version i can see the jar uh, i can see the pom and related 
json file so from this particular location i want to fetch my dependency to this app so what is the first thing uh, we need to provide the same maven coordinates we have given and along with that this is important we have to give the classifier as mule plugin if you can see other connectors it's just a dependency and for all of them the classifier is mule plugin similarly we should put the classifier as mule plugin not mule application not mule package or mule connector it should be mule plugin okay so if i save this okay and is reflecting but uh, i don't want the icon to be shown currently okay okay uh yeah so okay so whenever i did this uh, add this dependency uh, i can see the connector reflect over here okay all the operations associated with it and one thing uh, i just want to you to keep in mind is that this is not the default icon of the connector sample connector default icon will be like uh, this one only this blue thing and uh, so for the previous version i have added an icon to my custom character so that's why it is uh, i mean fetching the same icon for the newest version uh, one second oh i think i haven't changed the version here. okay i have installed 1.0.1 here so let me try okay 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 so it's a default icon only okay so if you can see the user app connector is having four operations is generated in our mule palette so let's try one of them uh, get all users flow so what does this show i need to select a connector config configuration for this get all users if i click on it i can see whatever i have given in the uh, i mean uh, while developing the connector we can see the same here x api key as well as the base uri so okay now here we need to make some changes as you can see this is a bare minimum connector we generated right but we don't want this expression mode to be enabled for x api key as well as whatever i type here okay it is not mask right it is showing as it is because uh, since it is an uh, sensitive data we don't want to be exposed as it is so we we have to mask it so that's the two things uh, we need to do here one is the remove the expression mode from here and to make the password as uh, sorry make the xapi key as masked okay and the third thing is uh, i don't want this icon to be Uh, for my connector i want a separate uh, what customized icon how can i achieve that so let's go back to our connector project uh, whenever we want to make changes to uh, the connector configuration we need to go to connection provider uh, class okay here i have as i have told you we have two parameters which is x api key as well as the base uri right you can see base uri as well as the x api key so here um i want the x api key to be masked so for that i need to pass a java annotation which is uh, provided by this sdk password okay and uh, this case sensitive check this how we are passing at password as well as i don't want the expression mode to be enabled right so i need to pass the expression annotation and i need to pass not supported inside this expression annotation the next thing is um, i need to have a custom icon for my connector so how can we achieve it i need to go to my um, connector project okay where is it inside the project so here along with the src target i have to put a new folder called icon and inside this the supported icon format is svg i need to put a icon inside it you see icon dot svg so we can download any svg of you want from i mean anywhere it's available in google 
so we can search and find it so for the time i have one svg with me one second um okay i have it let me okay this is the icon i need the icon dot svg to be placed inside my project folders icon folder okay and make sure that it is reflecting in here yeah it's reflected uh, so that's the three things that we want to change right first we want to change the expression mode and change it to mask this as well as change the connector icon and for that uh, we have done these changes we have added the expression parameter we have changed uh, uh, expression annotation we have added the add password annotation as well as we have added the icon uh, over here so let's generate the connector install the connector again but this time let me go with the different version okay see this uh i have increased the version from 1 to 2 let me install this again so meanwhile installing uh, we can discuss about the docs generated as you can see whenever we generate a connector somebody using it should be aware of what kind of values what kind of configurations and everything associated with it right uh, if if there is no proper documentation available to it then it's not a perfect connector so uh, mule sdk is providing uh, this particular documentation automatically it will generate the technical documentation automatically and i repeat this is not part of the rust connect this comes with the mule sdk so if i one second sorry if i go to this particular folder and inside docs i can see this and as you can see xapi key connection provider what are the operations involved create a user and how the xml prefix is there what is the operation of the parameters required the configuration required whatever errors it throws everything is generated automatically so this is a big advantage right okay so i believe our connector has been yeah it's success now let me check my m2 repo yeah it's installed in my local repository now i want to go back to my studio and change the version of the connector right in the pom.xml what i have done i have just included 1.0.1 i need to change it to 1.0.2 let me say this so let's see whether it yeah no second okay the icon seems to be not the one i expected uh one second okay i think your 1.0.0 will be having that right true 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 yeah 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 i can from there you can take yeah yeah uh, but i think i haven't put mast or expression mode in there i'm not sure let me see get all users um uh, No, no, I haven't masked it. Okay, um, okay, let's. No problem. We'll add the two itself. Let the. I just want to show show you that whatever um, icons that we included, it will be shown in here. Okay, I don't know if some random icon is showing. I have fetched it from Google, and get all uses. So, what changes we have made? We have made changes to the icon. we have made a couple of changes in the connection configuration let's see whether it's reflecting so see that expression mode is gone for x api key and as well as whenever whatever value i type it's showing as masked okay so uh, that being said i told you test connection is the major advantage here right so i should show you how this will work okay yeah so what is happening when i am clicking on the test connection i'll show you 
for whichever connector it is there will be if there is a test connection there will be a validate method associated with it okay and inside my connection provider class if i scroll to the down there will be a validate method calling uh to the endpoint that has been i specified in the connector descriptor as test connection and it is expecting valid status code as 200 and if it is 200 then i will be getting test connection as successful if 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 it is not 200 then we will be getting an error okay uh, time out exceeded is a different thing mm, okay okay so here uh, this is expected okay because the this particular validate method is not having uh, response time milliseconds as expected um, let's say i think it's around 1 uh, or 2 seconds that's why it's returning time out as exceeded within that time okay so what is the work around here um, there is no right or wrong answers we can do uh, as per our needs so what i have done is uh, there is a method defined inside this rest connection class where i need to pass the where i where i have the a choice to pass the uh, response time in milliseconds over here okay. so i am passing uh, yeah one minute and yes and here i want you to understand what is happening in the connector uh, so whenever we are deploying the application uh, here there will be a connection object created and for all the request for all the request we'll be putting the default headers as x api key and this x api key will be fetched from the parameter that we just mentioned okay so this is little bit java i mean uh, it's simple whatever api key that we give in the parameter it is fetched over here before creating the connection okay so every request will be having the header as x api key passed here okay this is how the connection configuration works this connection dot validate okay. um see this and i don't want any more changes uh, maybe i can change one more thing i don't okay i don't want this to be optional uh, and i want an example to be given i don't want the base uri parameter to be optional i can give an example for you to see that we need to pass the example parameter so here uh, we have made two changes we have made changes to the test connection method that we are referring because this particular validate method defined in the in class uh, we have the provision to pass the response time in milliseconds in the previous method that is generated by default does not have it so this test connection is taking some time to respond so by that time our function is assuming that no response is getting and it is returning uh, uh, that particular error so in order to avoid that only we are passing a specific response time out in milliseconds okay so let me change the version uh and i'll install it okay uh, whatever schemas i mean whatever data types we have uh, mentioned in the raml or in the connector descriptor phase it will be shown in here as uh, json schema okay the build is success let's go back to the studio and change the version 1.0.3 save it this time okay see both of them are now uh, a required param and an example in a gray i mean it's showing as right it's not active but it is showing as i mean there is an example so let's pass uh those required values cd meetup as uh, so well as the base uri so where i can get it from here 
let me do the test connection i hope this will be successful this time see now we get the test connection as successful and in the error scenario when we are not passing the proper xapi key what are we getting we are getting see 401 server responded with status 401 but this will not be the case for every connectors right here we are just going with a very simple approach uh, where we just need to pass an xapi key and testing it but let's say what about a connector like netsuite a connector similar to netsuite where we want to pass the consumer id consumer secret uh, token id token secret those kind of uh, i mean configuration we want to uh, customize it right so uh, that is not available by default so what we can do is we can extend the same class and uh, define our own functions and customize our own functions and do the test connection and whenever an unexpected scenario is happening we can also uh, i mean change the display message which is to be passed over here so yeah that's one scenario if that, for that you need to have at least some java background so let's deploy our application and see whether it is working or not Yeah. Okay, for testing, I have kept a Postman collection. Okay, One second, what error? Okay, so because maybe deleting the user. Okay, okay, so deleting the user, I need to put a delete user by ID. Here I need to select a configuration. Okay, get a user. Here also I need to provide the connector configuration I just created and the user ID in query param. So for creating a uh, user, it should be a post request, right? You need to pass a body over here and it will be passed it to the connector as payload. So yeah, we have configured our application with all the required operations. Let's test it one by one. Okay, nothing to compile, all classes are up to date. Okay, maybe the failure, we have not of connectors. Okay, let me go with the previous version. Okay, create a user as well as get all and delete a user. Okay, I need to select the same configuration. Okay. Attributes dot Perhaps what user ID? Mm. Yeah. I'm having Maven conflicts, that's why the dependency is failing. There was an error building on the project test connector. OK. 
ओके टेस्ट कनेक्टर ओके Let me create a new app. Second. Uh, since I have installed multiple connectors, um, and some kind of Maven conf conflict is occurring, so that's why I'm not able to deploy it. I can pass the same dependency in this new project. Okay. It all uses. Okay, some can, okay, will be success. So maybe we can include the latest version as well. Let's wait till the app deploys. Okay, the application is deployed. Let's try this get users endpoint. No listener for get users. Get all users. Okay. Get all users. Um, let's send it. Okay. We are able to get a <clears throat> we are able to get a successful response for our connector operation. Get all users. And similarly, it will work for all the other operation. Maybe we can test it. One second. I'm start user ID. We have delete operation to delete a user by ID. Okay. We have get all users, get a user by ID, delete it, and create a user is remain. Okay. So here. Get a user as well as delete a user. Okay. Hmm, strange. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm facing a little bit issue uh, with the new version that I have installed because it is having some conflict in the dependency. But as you see, it's the same as the previous version that we have installed.